So after that lead in, I think you might be a little intrigued to find out a little bit more about Ola Uda Equiano. And we are going to be reading an autobiographical piece titled From the Interesting Narrative of the Life of Ola Uda Equiano. This is a slave narrative by that gentleman. So I want to give you the background. Ola Uda Equiano was born in 1745 to 1797. He was a soldier, a sailor, North Pole explorer. Ola Uda Equiano led a remarkable life by the standards of any age. Writing as a former slave in the 1700s, Equiano left powerful testimony on the brutality of enslavement that became the model for a new genre, the slave narrative. A ocean Crossing. According to his autobiography, Equiano was born a chief's son in the Igbo or Igbo culture of present-day Nigeria. When he was 11, he was captured and sold as a slave to a series of African masters before making the miserable journey to the Americas known as the Middle Passage. Sold in the West Indies to a British Navy officer, Michael Pascal, Equiano returned to sea with his new owner, who renamed him Gustafus Vasa. Equiano spent years fighting for Britain, hoping to be freed for good service. Instead, in 1762, he was sold again to Quaker merchant Robert King, who trained him in business. In 1766, after 21 years as a slave, Equiano bought back his freedom, moved to London, and promptly launched his business career. But by 1773, he was at sea again, first on an expedition to find a Northwest Passage and later traveling to Central America and Turkey. Turning points. In the late 1770s, Equiano had returned to London where he got involved in anti-slavery efforts and converted to Christianity. In 1789, as public debate over abolishing the slave trade began in Britain, Equiano wrote, self-published, and promoted his narrative. Equiano's life story exposed the cruelty of the slave trade and made him an important public figure. He died in 1797, just 10 years before Britain abolished the slave trade. Historians look more closely. Equiano's narrative includes a wealth of specific detail, most of which check out against other sources. But in 1999, English professor Vincent Coretta uncovered two documents that suggested Equiano was not born in Africa, his baptismal record from England and a ship's passengers list both of which identify Equiano's birthplace as South Carolina. Historians continue to debate the evidence and how, if at all, it changes the value of the interesting narrative. Carretta himself points out that even if the narrative is based on the oral accounts of other slaves, its descriptions are still provide a valuable portrait of early American life and the Middle Passage. So with that background information, you will be reading along with me the remainder of this excerpt from his book.